Thank you, Lori. I'm going to uh, jump right into this. Um, and I'm just going to show statistics. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, all of you have seen this before, but um, this looking at the existing building stock is just uh, incredibly important if we're going to achieve any kind of uh, goals, whether it's 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever it is. Just to give you uh, a comparison, we're 400 million square feet. Philadelphia is 40 million square feet. So this is an enormous problem. Um, uh, the gentleman from the UK said 40 some percent of the carbon comes from buildings. Um, as, as Lori said, we're way beyond that. Um, what I'm not gonna talk about, and there's some incredibly beautiful buildings that were done in the 50s and 60s, I'm not gonna talk about them. I'm not gonna talk about um, the Seagram Lever House uh, or even buildings like this, which is exactly uh, the kind of building that I'm gonna talk about but this happens to be a beautiful one. This is a look building and has the same issues that all of these other buildings has, except uh, it's just quite a bit more beautiful. Um, I was also struck by just looking at these graphs in the 50s and 60s. Um, as a summer job, I pumped gas in a gas station. Anybody wanna guess what the price of gas was when I was pumping gas? Somebody throw out a number, anybody? I can't even hear you. 19 cents a gallon, 19 cents. So you can tell that nobody was really focused on energy. Certainly it wasn't a cost factor. So, um, and full disclosure, uh, I came to New York in 1966 and started working, sorry, working for an architect who, was, who did that building and I started doing buildings like this. So I have a certain familiarity with what made them tick. And this is sort of what they look like. They are zoning envelope buildings. If you were to take a diagram and say, what, what is the zoning here and what was the zoning there? They fit exactly, not close, exactly. Squeezing the most area out of any, any block just according to the zoning envelope. So we, we uh, with, our, with my colleagues at Terrapin, we did an analysis of what what is possible with these buildings? We picked this one because uh, this is um, a building owned by the Durst family and we knew we could get good solid data from them. So typical of that era. One of the issues with these buildings is floor to floor height. If you're squeezing as much as you can on, under a zoning envelope, the floor to floor heights in these buildings is typically 11 feet more or less. When you start to put in the beams up here and the ducts, this isn't even showing ductwork. Uh, the ceilings end up being lower than this. You can touch them in many of these buildings. That's not going to change. You can't change the floor to floor height in these buildings. They also have very antiquated mechanical systems along the perimeter. So there's some very functional pieces of these buildings that don't change. We act and also, being very current, there is a potential for a very serious hurricane to hit New York. It's now a category four. This is a serious 100 mile an hour storm. These buildings were designed with the exterior walls with no wind load. They didn't have a code for wind because the buildings weren't these big, tall, skinny, wave in the breeze buildings that we're, that we're now looking at. So these walls are a very old system, way beyond their useful life or predicted life. And could not withstand a category three hurricane. Let's hope we don't have one. So the real issue with these buildings is that um, if you look at them, there's no incentive. And many of these buildings, in especially Midtown East, are now overbuilt. The zoning laws have changed. They've been down zoned, especially in the middle of the blocks, so that you, if you could have built a 15 FAR building, I think everybody knows FAR terms, if you could have built a 15, if you tore it down now, you can only build a 12. And, <clears throat> and uh, nobody, no developer in New York City is gonna even entertain that, not even for a second. But what we did look at is what would happen if the city allowed more uh, density on a particular site. And one of the interesting things is that New York City um, has a tremendous um, 
asset at its disposal that costs absolutely nothing. Floor area. The city can say, at any given time, we will let you build that much more floor area. And what does it cost the city of New York? Nothing. So as a, as a zoning opportunity, the city could say to these developers who have these out-of-date buildings, we will allow you, if you, you could tear this building down, very expensive to empty out a building. Not, you, the rent roll decreases, and then you have to demolish it, and you have no income coming in, big problem. But if you can build a bigger building, now you're talking. What if you built a really bigger building, but made it seriously green? So whether you're talking about net zero energy or passive house, or let's just call it a seriously green building that would, <clears throat> that would meet any kind of standard of the day and build a bigger building. So this would mean a zoning increase of uh, typically would go from 15 to 18 to, with another 20% bonus to 21.6. Now I think even with the additional cost of building a seriously green building, you stand a chance. So this is just a diagram of what one could do, uh, perhaps underfloor air, perhaps solar shading, um, just a very, a very uh, a much still with a fair amount of glazing because connection with the exterior uh, biophilia is extremely important. Um, high, much higher ceilings. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that one could look at in this seriously green building, um, all achievable with today's technology. And when we did our analysis, the, the reality of it was that the building that we looked at had 1,100 people and used a certain amount of energy we could put almost twice the number of people in the new building because it's that much bigger and use less energy. So here's the trick. 1,100 people, 210 EUI, 2,000 people, 138 EUI. If this could happen, and this is certainly not gonna happen in all of these buildings, and they're not only in Midtown, they're also in Lower Manhattan, it's not gonna happen in all these buildings, but if you took a certain percentage of them, added some additional floor area, made them seriously green, uh, you might have something. So that, that's our hope. So, thank you.